This is Scouting Hot Finds. We have Matt Delk here at the South Carolina Tradery in Easley, South Carolina. Matt has one of the largest collections of 08 belt buckles anywhere in the country. And today in this video, he's going to kind of explain to us a little bit of the history of Boy Scout belt buckles, the styles, and then specifically talk about his collection of belt buckles from the Carolinas. Take it away, Matt. Hey, how are you doing? Um, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about the history and development of these buckles, Jason. Um, as we were talking last night, uh, kind of the issue was how do you get into lot collecting lodge belt buckles? Well, as I started picking them up, primarily from the ones from South Carolina that I could find as a South Carolina collector, I noticed that, first of all, they were extremely hard and they were normally worn when I found them. And as I got to think about it, I realized that they're like the first uh, camp patches and OA patches uh, that our order issued in the 40s and 50s, uh, like our WAB issues. They were really not made to be collected. And the very early ones weren't really even made to be traded. They were meant to be worn as a point of pride uh, by the wearer. And because of that, there wasn't really a desire to get more than one, maybe two, of them. And they weren't made in tremendous quantities, also because of the cost. Um, so if you think about it, we're all familiar with this uh, standard web-type belt and buckle. This was worn with a different style buckle going back into the 1920s up until the ones they have today, which are a little bit thicker and, and uh, 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 better looking, in my opinion. Um, but you can imagine if every kid in your troop wore this and all of a sudden you became an OA member and you qualified to wear something different, you would be of course very proud to wear uh, something like this, say on your web buckle uh, to a, a, a court of honor or something. And then uh, the OA of course started marketing different buckles. Uh, um, there was also a very popular belt used in the uh, 40s and 50s and 60s that the scouts marketed uh, nationally that you could interchange buckles on I guess when people started making their own buckles and lodges eventually caught on and started making a few for members to wear as a point of pride here's one from uh, uh, that was made either by Hannigus Lodge or Hannigus Chapter I'm really not sure uh, which one but would have come out probably in that time era and uh, the uh, other item I want to uh, point out is that as a, a course as, as Philmont and Western things became popular in culture, so did the larger Western style belt. Here's one made by Itabap Shaito Hollow Lodge 188, and is an example of a lodge made belt. And then of course, you've got enormously complex belt buckles made today. Here's one, a relatively newer buckle, by Takoda Lodge, uh, that it just enormous 3D um, uh, in the manufacturing, three-dimensional manufacturing in the buckle, a beautiful buckle, and then on the back, uh, it even tells the history of the, the founding of the lodge with just incredible detail. And then, of course, you've also got from I've run across some homemade items that were obviously products of a of a handicraft lodge. Here's one from Skyuka Lodge 270. Um, and I've also run across many that were made with minute variations, such as uh, here's an example from Lodge 49, Sonic A Lodge, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, that was made, at, uh, it's either sandcast or stamped brass, and then you see they filled it in with the uh, enamel to make a complete, uh, to take the same buckle and to make a completely different product by the manufacturer. So kids would have been very proud to wear that. And then of course, OA sold national issues such as we all uh, uh, remember the Mako buckles that were popular in the 60s and 70s that were uh, uh, relatively cheap to manufacture. So they're out there in large quantities as well as the enormously popular full brass buckle that was made in the uh, late 60s, early 70s by National and a smaller version they made for the smaller belts. It's a little more difficult to acquire. 
And then the same in the 1970s and 80s with the uh, MGM Indian design. Of course, these were enormously popular to go in the Western style belts. And then you even see uh, a little more difficult to acquire the smaller version for a more dressy type belt. <laughs> And then um, you also see uh, some enormous difficulty in finding some of these nowadays, such as uh, um, here's an example of one made in uh, very small quantities for Lodge 11. I've got about uh, six different uh, types made by the same manufacturer. Unfortunately, I don't have information on the manufacturer that uh, from about six different lodges in my collection and I hope to find more as time goes on. But uh, as a treat for uh, not only your, your uh, listeners and your Carolina OA folks, I, I brought the South and North Carolina OA buckles to show you, Jason, and uh, we can spend a little bit of time on this. I know you're passionate about South and North Carolina OA. So here are the ones, uh, 32 different ones from South and North Carolina that I've been able to find and acquire over the years, starting with a, a, a enormously difficult buckle made for a fundraising purpose to, I believe, uh, move and transport the QQ Lab and, uh, Lodge from um, Camp Linwood Hain, uh, a Bob White Lodge buckle that's enormously difficult to acquire as well as a couple of different Okanichi Lodge 104 buckles that are beautiful. Um, hold those up so you can see them. I've uh, seen, and I don't know if I have uh, every variety, but the Croatan Lodge buckles that were made in brass in the 1970s. These were enormously popular as well as I've seen in a uh, greater degree the Mako type belt buckle that was made. These discs were made and could be used on bolo ties. I've even seen them on keychains and the like. Um, and on these small brass buckles to go on the smaller leather belts are fairly popular. These types are enormously popular and you see a lot of them from camps, even a few district and council buckles made of this style. This was a national uh, order item and uh, here is uh, an example of a catalog uh, from 1973. This is something such as a, a lodge chief and a lodge advisor would receive in the mail and it shows that you could order these in quantities as low as 36. So apparently these were very expensive to acquire and if you look at the price, Jason, uh, they range based on the quantity and the number of ornament, ornament, uh, ornamentation and letters on the buckle, uh, anywhere from a, a dollar forty per buckle up to about two dollars and fifty cents a buckle. And if you think about it, in, an, in the early 1970s, when a lodge probably charged about fifty cents for a flap. Uh, you're looking at the equivalent of about a $25 expense to a kid today to acquire their lodge's buckle. So that probably explains a lot why lodges didn't order them in tremendous quantities and then kids didn't buy five and six at a time uh, and then have extras left over to trade. So and that also explains why probably more than half of the buckles in my collection are worn. Uh, I've got about 232 different ones now, including these 32 you see in front of you here. I've been able to find four different ones from Mohissa Lodge that were made uh, uh, relatively recently, I think, in the more 1990s time era. And then I've seen uh, two very difficult ones to acquire, including this one is, is impossibly difficult to find. I'm hoping some listeners may know of one or perhaps even have one themselves from Tomachichi Lodge in Savannah. Um, and then I'm going to save my favorite one for last. Here is one from, uh, uh, it says Cherokee Order of the Arrow. And as I understand it, this was from Cherokee District in Sloggy Lodge 163 that this was for their or they are chapter. I've also ha heard of others that believed it was from Cherokee Lodge in Alabama, but uh, from everything I've heard, this is a Sloggy Lodge 163 belt buckle from probably the early 1960s. Um, 
Then Atacula Kula has some very tough buckles to acquire, including this one that uh, I've seen a handful of them, but the Lodge is very competitive, and uh, if you ever have a chance to get one of these, uh, uh, get it. They're difficult to acquire. And then these are enormously difficult to acquire. Uh, these were made in the uh, late 1980s, early 1990s. They were uh, handmade in the Philippines uh, in small quantities and sold by the lodge on a pre-order basis. Uh, this smaller one is especially difficult to find. I think it came in as an error in an order and only 18 of those were made and sold by the lodge. And you do see a few of these with the lodge uh, um, um, officers' positions engraved on the bottom. So, and here's one of their more recent belt buckles from uh, celebrating the uh, 100th anniversary of the BSA. I found two, Jason, from Itabapshayito Hollow Lodge, uh, and, and it's a good example of a different manufacturer using different techniques. This one appears more uh, to be more of a either a heavy stamp or even a sand, what they call a sand cast. Uh, type of manufacturing and this one is obviously more stamped but to stamp it they're able to get more details in a lot of respects in the in, uh, say in the the face and in the the boat uh, the front of the canoe and in the background but then but to do that you sacrifice the width and, and strength of the buckle sometimes so that's an, that's an example of different forms of manufacturing and two different buckles from Lodge 188 and um, of course uh, Unalihi Lodge uh, uh, produced a buckle uh, I believe in the late 1960s early 1970s time period and uh, they've more recently come up with a newer version in the last few years and then uh, Nar and Rar Lodge came out with one in the 70s that I've seen multiple examples of that was misspelled with an M but the Lodge uh, somehow or somehow someone distributed them I've been able to pick up two and I've seen others and then a nor more recent buckle that's uh, got the Lodge totem prominently displayed and Skyuka Lodge has produced four different buckles their first one was made, I believe, by the same manufacturer that made the Unalihi buckle that's got the, the lodge totem and the details of the mountains in the back and was made for a smaller width belt. And then they had a matching uh, neckerchief slide and belt buckle. Uh, and I've got a handful of other ones in my collection from other lodges outside of the Carolinas that were made in this fashion with a matching buckle and matching slide. Same piece of uh, metal, and I believe the metal is stamped, but I'm not 100% sure. It's just the backing is different. One has a ring for a neckerchief slide, and the other one has a uh, for a narrow width belt. And then Skyuka Lodge remade that buckle in the uh, 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 probably 12 years or so ago. And then more recently, they came out with a uh, an, uh, an oval uh, cast buckle that's uh, got the brass details on the front with a, a black background. It's a beautiful buckle. And then uh, Catawba Lodge, here's an example of something we've seen often in the patch world, a reorder coming back different. They did a hundred buckles as pre-order only and uh, a lot of buckles you find are numbered uh, that tells you something of the quantity. Here is number 96 from an order of 100 that Catawba did. And then they did a second order of 100 for those who didn't get in on the first order, came back. The buckle is the, the same with the exception of the hardware on the back uh, and the numbering, of course. Uh, they moved the, uh, um, the, the loop for the belt over so that uh, the belt, the end of the belt will come under the buckle when you wear it. And also, coming back from the manufacturer, the tang, uh, this part is called the tang, is different. Uh, it's more of a pointy one rather than the, the knobby one that they had on the first order. So uh, as you collect and find them, I encourage you to look for the ones not only from your lodge, but others. And, uh, and of course, I've, I've been able to procure about 232 different lodge buckles with a few chapter buckles. And uh, a few of them are from, say, chapter, or uh, not only chapters, but 
con uh, section conclaves where the lodge totem is prominently displayed. Uh, um, and it's taken me over 15 years to find them. So uh, if you have any, I'd, I'd uh, love to hear from you. Uh, and uh, other than that, uh, I'm happy to share the collection with anyone who'd like to see pictures. Matt, why don't you share with everyone your email address so they can contact you in case they have a buckle that they want to tell you about. Sure, uh, it's mattdelk at hotmail.com, M-A-T-T-D-E-L-K at hotmail.com. And, uh, um, Oh, and I've got an alibi, Jason. I uh, uh, forgot to share with you my favorite buckle off the table, and that is this one. This was made uh, by, I'm still trying to get information on the manufacturer, uh, but it's made in the same style as the Lodge 11 buckles I sh uh, showed you earlier. And I've got about uh, six or seven different lodges in my collection that were made by this manufacturer that uh, used a certain technique, certain letter stamps and whatnot. But in my opinion, this is the hardest 134 item to acquire for your collection. Um, it is extremely tough and I'm hoping maybe through this broadcast we can find another collector that has more information on when these came out. I'm guessing the early 1970s and uh, may, maybe even has another one that uh, they can share pictures with, uh, with everyone. So. Well, thanks for sharing that. We appreciate you coming on and sharing your passion and your collection. And again, if you'd like to find out more information, just send Matt an email. We'll also have an audio podcast of this same topic on Scouting Hot Finds Radio. Again, Matt, thanks very much. Uh, my pleasure.